Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with a amazing regenerative medicine doctor who is all the way in Cancun, Mexico, very close to me now in Playa del Carmen, Dr. Joel Osario. Dr. Joel, what's up, my brother? How are you? Good. Thank you for the invite, and I'm just enjoying it. Uh, having a little bit of jet lag because I just got back from Dubai, but all good. Yep. He's uh, made, made himself available here from New York City. He's a jet setter traveling around the world. And uh, this podcast, for everybody who's watching this, is going to be unreal. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff today in the regenerative medicine world, even a, a partnership that I'm going to be doing with Dr. Joel in helping people in the States and in the West really come down to Cancun uh, to seek various regenerative medicine um, treatments like stem cells and other things. And we'll, we'll be talking about that. But Doc, you know, as I like to do on this show nowadays, and, and for the purpose of the record, today is January 25th. Uh, 2023. Obviously, we are in very strange times, depending on your perspective. But why don't you just kind of give the audience, you know, a little bit of background on you? Uh, you know, why did you choose to take the regenerative me medicine path? I mean, obviously, you have tra you're trained at Harvard. Uh, you've been schooled. You're an international lecturer. I mean, you've gone all over the map from a medical standpoint. You're very accomplished. What led you into the regenerative field? Well, it was basically prevention, you know, advanced prevention at some point. Uh, because uh, due to a very critical event that I went through in my life, which was uh, losing my dad, my dad um, 12 years ago, almost 13 years ago. I mean, this year will be 13 years ago since he passed away. I decided because I started even before he died, okay. Sure. But I decided to to join to the most innovative way to have that approach to patients on a different perspective on the medical field, okay. Not alternative, nothing uh, different, but scientific and medicine based evidence is what I I was learning back then, and then I improved my methods. The, you know, I learned way more, and that's why I joined. You know, this beautiful beautiful discipline, regenerative medicine. I just, uh, I'm passionate about it, but, uh, the, the crucial event was my, my dad passing away 13 years ago. Yeah. So that's when I decided to join the field. Um, just for you to know, uh, I'm a medical doctor. I'm a sur general surgeon and I left my practice aside when I decided to get deep into regenerative medicine. So, and now what I do is completely regenerative medicine. Yeah. Well, why don't, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because obviously, and I didn't give your bio, but I'll do that right now. So again, he has do, he does have 20 years of experience in medical practice. He did his, complete his training at Harvard. I have been to his practice and I have seen his accreditations. And again, you guys, this guy has an illustrious career of speaking. You know, he is a member of A4M. Uh, he's been in their advanced medicine uh, podcast series. I mean, I've looked at a lot of the stuff. I've actually been at the same conferences that he was when we, when he and I didn't actually know each other. Uh, and we were introduced by, you know, a good friend of the show, Dr. Uh, Roy Buzz Korth, of course, who was actually recently on the podcast. So I'm very excited. You know, Monica and I went down to his practice about two weeks ago and got a chance to see how amazing it is. You know, it's literally overlooking the ocean, the sea right down there in the corner of Cancun. I mean, it's absolutely spectacular. I mean, you can't really have a better location in the world. I mean, there's a reason that we moved down here. It's such a beautiful place uh, and it's full of, you know, really international uh people you know it's not just people in mexico right i mean you have tons of europeans you have tons of people from canada uh, and now you have tons of expatriates from coming down here from the united states so it's an amazing place to be and as i told you uh you know a guy that i follow 
uh, Simon, I forget his last name, right? He runs, um, what is it? Uh, so- Sovereign Man and Sovereign Man Confidential. And Sovereign Man is right now like the biggest expatriate membership group in the world. Like he literally advises financially, uh, spiritually, a lot of different for people that are like lo- looking to get a second passport, looking to leave their native countries. And he recommends right now his number one city in the world for relocation for all types of people, especially successful entrepreneurs, Cancun, Mexico. It's literally number one. I was actually reading the article. I'll send that to you because I know you and I haven't talked in a couple of days, but uh, it's experiencing explosive growth. And the entire Riviera Maya, you know, uh, Quintana Roo, all the way up even to Merida, the peninsula, as they call it down here in Mexico, is going to experience massive growth in the next five to 10 years. Uh, and I'm already seeing it, right? Where I live in Playa del Carmen. I know you have been used to it because you live down in Cancun, but uh, it's awesome, man, to really, to get a chance to know you, to you know expose you to the Jay Campbell audience today on this podcast. So with that said, you know, with your dad's passing, you know, really you know, pushing you into the regenerative field, where do you see it going, Joel? Like, again, you know, we're in 2023. There's a lot of people in the space And I also want to get your take really on like what happened in the last three years in the States that really kind of crashed, if that's the right word, the stem cell field, you know, just kind of your background as far as like, you know, and again, I know it's an opinion question, but like, what do you think really happened in the States? Is this, is this just another FDA big pharma move where they are just afraid of stem cells replacing a lot of allopathic medicine? Well, I mean, since years ago when I started, you know, on this field, I have witnessed a lot of things, different, uh, let's say, theories about certain pathologies that should be treated with the stem cells, uh, what kind of stem cells are better for what kind of pathologies, I mean, different kind of pathologies. But I think one of the, the, the problems, the main problems that um, a lot of practices faced in the U.S. was due to claiming something they could improve. Mm-hmm. which, I mean, the stem cells are just the, the starter, the beginning of something that is going to come like big time worldwide. Sure. Sure. Regenerative medicine is the uh, just the start or the beginning of what is coming after, which is reprogramming medicine. That's when we're talking about longevity. Right. When we're talking about longevity. We're not talking about only to replace the cells that come into the tissues and repair the tissues. We're talking about the submolecular level to get it into that that kind of submolecular level where proteins can heal and repair DNA. That's the longevity purpose of whatever you, we have been listening lately, uh, uh, gene editing or some of the kind of tools that have been designed, I mean, uh, by bioengineers or um, biotechnology, I mean, in, in general, to achieve that kind of uh, pathology prevention or avoiding of certain diseases in the future so you can increase your lifespan, right? Right. So at this point, uh, the, the the most known tool we have, I mean, biological tool we have, are the stem cells. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of uh, non-ethical practitioners can make <laughs> business out of it. So you know, you I don't know if you you heard about. I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, people from your audience have heard about uh, m- many doctors claiming uh, through Medicare certain treatments uh, with amniotic fluid, for example. Sure. I am not against it, but if it, it's not covered by the insurance, so you can you can get into legal issues, right? Also, if you claim on your website that you are curing diseases like or, or autoimmune diseases or all the kind of uh, problems, something that you can't prove, it's going to be difficult for you, I mean, to defend yourself against something that may happen to a patient, unfortunately, uh, as a side effect, or maybe nothing happened positive to patients because we have to be realistic about this. We don't cure. We just, we, I mean, the pathways we target by giving stem cells to someone, specifically mesenchymal stem cells, and the purest ones you can get uh, this day are Wharton jelly derivated mesenchymal stem cells. You have to remember countries like Mexico, yeah, it's, it's getting like, bigger like uh, big time stem cells pr- place for patients to come over yeah but the mexican biotechnology is way behind that american biotechnology that's why we only work and we isolate cells in the u.s and that's why we treat patients you know from collecting the human placentas and umbilical cords to obtain the the, the purest uh, wharton jelly mesenchymal stem cells 
to be given, I mean, to patients in a safe way. Like, so we can face some, some side effects, not only me, but I mean, most of the practitioners. So you have to know and you have to explain patients. I mean, what they're getting is not something that they've seen at a, you know, DC Comics movie or a Marvel, <laughs> Marvel movie. You know, you're not going to turn into Captain America or Hulk or something like that. It, the two pathways we're attaching to relief and to bring a benefit for are oxidative stress, because we all suffer that no matter yep. what water contamination, pollution, uh, you can name it, radiation, uh, lifestyle. Eating the food in the USA. <laughs> <laughs> well, processed food everywhere. <laughs> um, and, and, <laughs> and also inflammation, chronic inflammation. You mentioned food. That's the number one cause of inflammation. Yep. Because we uh, naturally get, have to absorb it through the, the guts. And unfortunately, the processed food that contains a lot of things that are super bad for for their organism so in general so they can affect you know that uh or they can trigger let's say in that way certain yeah. genes that you can uh suffer in the in the midterm or long term i mean in terms of the years you 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 might live okay for example once any kind of disease appears in someone's body it's not like the tissues it's within the dna okay right. So you can, you can name any kind of disease, uh, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, sclerosis, sclerodermia, lupus, whatever. They're, they're, I mean, not even the pharmaceutical regular treatments can offer a cure for it. They just control it, right? Steroids exactly. or whatever kind of immune depressant, whatever. And also, for example, if you get into a, a metabolic disorder like diabetes, which is the most known and common, once the, those genes have been triggered, by the epigenetic factors, right? There's no way to go back, but there is right. a way to prevent the, the inflammation sure. that pathology can cause to your entire system. Which that's why uh, we decided to use at certain pathologies what is uh, evidence-based and scientific-based medicine offered to some pathologies in, in those patients that suffer X or Y uh, diseases, right? So. By telling you this, this is just the beginning of what is coming after. And now, as I mentioned, gene editing, uh, b among other um, uh, bio bioengineered tools, yep. we're targeting in the future. I mean, the stem cells are the beginning, but we're targeting in the future to treat proteins, to repair right. the proteins. Right. DNA, that's what we're targeting to do. At this stage, the, I mean, in my opinion, because I've treated hundreds, if not thousands of patients with the stem cells, uh, we haven't developed or the patients haven't developed any kind of serious side effect. I mean, that's, I mean, the most important thing in, on this field are these things that I will mention. One, the evidence, the scientific evidence, and then not causing any negative side effect. Do no I, harm. I, Do no yeah. harm. Hey, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> because if <laughs> sure, uh, because if you promise the patient you're gonna get rid of his disease and he pays you for uh, 500 million of mesenchymal stem cells or yeah. billions of exosomes, because exosomes are microvesicles that are they can help. I mean, to repair some tissues, but I mean now they're everywhere. Like even if you go to some grocery shop, I mean you can find them there. <laughs> It's like they're trendy, right? Because labs didn't need to get some some uh, kind of business out of it because they're investing. They're investing Pretty a lot sure of money. Starbucks will have an exosome latte. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> That's a good idea because they're very trendy now. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. I mean... Obviously, if you promote and you sell it, and th that you're gonna speak the beauty about that. But if not, I mean, we know that they they have more limitations than a pure stem cell because yeah. it's less powerful than stem cells. I don't want right. to get into that, but what I'm right. saying is that the main mistake that happened with in doctors, from my perspective in the U.S., is that they used to claim a lot of things they couldn't prove. It just claims. Like, 
Yeah. yeah. The second thing is that obviously you can't prove if you can't prove something, you can treat it as well. So if they offer, I mean, it's not the same to to prevent a disease, as I said, than trying to cure an Alzheimer's patient or a right. Parkinson's patient. I mean, right. they can the cells can bring the benefit, of course. They, they get, I mean, the tissues get renewed depending on the application. Okay, the joints can get repaired, of course, depending on the application, the biomaterials, depending on the uh, on the technique that you they use. But you, if you claim something, that's the problem. So pe- people believe in that because we we are believers and we have faith about certain things. You know, like we follow uh, the 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 trend stuff because we believe in that. Yeah. So yeah. now stem cells can be given. At any point with any kind of product, like from creams to shampoos, ointments, of course, I always tell people the same. If you eat a carrot, that will contain stem cells. Yeah. Of course. Right. An apple. Yeah. yeah, of course. They will contain, um, I mean, those fruits and, and vegetables will contain stem cells because they have, I mean, th- th- that's what they have or they're made of differently from our stem cells. But once again, that's the main problem that I witness in the U.S. I mean, when they used to claim a lot of things they could improve. Now, in Mexico, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yes, we have multiple practitioners offering stem cells treatments, like freely, at some point. But we have to be realistic. What I've witnessed on this side is that the biotechnology we're using is less, let's, let's, let's say it this way, it's less powerful than the one we can get from the U.S. for obvious yeah. reasons. Because we, in Mexico, I mean, most of the practitioners use adipose derivative mesenchymal stem cells, which are more limited. And that's and that's because of just it's cheaper to get those and to procure those than they are the ones that we're because, talking about. Because um, let's say in that way, I have witnessed that um, in two labs. Yeah. They pay the plastic surgeons to bring I mean, the fat from a liposculture or a liposuction from patients that you never know if they got a yeah. metabolic disorder or an autoimmune disorder. You never know about it. And I'm not talking about if they're uh, free from an infectious disease because that's right. by law. You have to, to analyze that and run the test. That's fine. But about the, the if they had some other pathology, the, the maybe right. a super obese guy that got a, a liposuction, right. liposuction right. because of whatever. So... I guess you're not obtaining the purest and the most powerful sure. material. Okay. Right. Right. So uh, I have witnessed in the way they bring the, the fat into the labs. Like, I mean, you're like, not, oh, not, shit. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do the biohazard materials uh, management <laughs> properly. Believe me. Okay. That's the first cause of oh, the first thing that I wanted to mention. The second one is that uh, that technique, I mean, uh, isolating the missing camel stem cells. It's not even, you're not going to find that in the U.S. anymore. It used to be trendy like 10, in between 10 to 7 years ago, no longer than that. But since 5 years ago, Barton Jelly has been, you know, the best. So in Mexico, we don't have that regulated. So Got nobody it. can claim that it's given Barton Jelly, I mean, Mexican technique or biotechnology to patients for medical protocols because it's not regulated by law. By law. I mean, if you, have, if you isolate the cells from uh, an umbilical cord, it's not that you can go and buy a, just placentas a, a, anywhere you like, you know, any clinic or uh, hospital uh, as, as big or as, as little it is, just to obtain that. That's legal. That's not. That's something you're not gonna find there. But if they're claiming something, you have to make sure it's an American product, just for your audience to know. Because if it's certified or I mean, an American product, yeah, it might be worth and jelly. Okay. But in Mexico, those are the two things. I mean, uh, just for your audience to know, that's why I'm very careful. Well, let me let me ask you some deeper questions around that. And this is profound information. I mean, people need to know this because, I, I mean, look, we both know, depending on whether they go to Mexico or Panama or, you know, now there's all sorts of ones down now, too, in the Caribbean, as you know. It's like, you know, everybody's going offshore for their quote unquote stem cell rejuvenation, you know, anti-aging treatments. And, and obviously a lot of very successful, sophisticated, calm elite people are going to these places. So I'm grateful that you are providing this differentiation. But when do people, and, and, and again, this is really a, uh, an important question, but for when do people not 
Because again, as you said, it's so promoted often as a magic pill, a magic bullet, a magic treatment. When do people, when or when should people like understand like what stem cells are not going to treat? Well, if you are a healthy patient, as I always tell the patients who have no pathologies or no reason to come and see me, uh, right. I always tell them that you're investing in your health. Exactly. Because we're decreasing the inflammation. Exactly. And you're, you, you might experience it. Of course, it's better for us to have biomarkers before the application taken. For sure. Blood work. And then to measure it like six months or a year after. Right. Some of them may vary, like uh, triglycerides may decrease, uh, the bad cholesterol may decrease, uh, the good cholesterol may increase. I mean, by reducing the inflammation, I'm talking uh, the bloodstream in general. So the blood will be will get distributed to different tissues. I mean, organs, you know. Sure. Because uh, that's why also I, I also recommend patients to avoid exercising 72 hours before and 72 hours after. Because right. if you if you work out a lot before you get the treatment, so that's naturally uh, the natural inf inflammation happens in, in the muscles. The cells will get attracted there. So the fate of the cells is basically. Uh, followed by following the, the inflammation. So we, if we reduce inflammation, not only by taking the stem cells treatment, for example, avoiding uh, high, you know, high content uh, of carbs or, or all the kind of processed food, if we mm -hmm. avoid a uh, certain, you know, bad lifestyle that, you know, uh, trying to avoid stress and all the, the, the life we, most of us, we, we may have, that's also a good start to decrease the inflammation, but systemically, by giving the IV, normally we we decrease that inflammation. So what we're doing is that we're bringing new and fresher, let's say in that way, fresher stem cells to those organs who have been, you know, uh, let's say overworking at some point. So I don't know if that makes sense, but no, it basically totally prevention, makes prevention is what it is. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. So then for people... Cause these are the type of questions that I get all the time. Like for people that have, you know, bone on bone, you know, uh, lower back issues, right? Like their vertebrae are, you know, so compressed from life. They're older. They're in their late fifties, early mid sixties. Some people maybe even in seventies. And again, they're bone on bone from whatever, you know, past life experiences they've had. Can they still get stem cells, you know, in that area? you know, in those joint areas and receive any kind of benefit. And again, I know it's an opinion question and I'm asking you the tough questions, but like, obviously you're an expert. I want to kind of get your opinion because this is the kind of stuff they ask. Okay. Um, from my perspective, there are no superhero doctors that can do, I mean, the work alone. So by telling you that you have to be surrounded by experts, you know, med a medical team that will support your work. Uh, it's not about giving, for example, I've heard multiple doctors giving IVs trying to reach the brain. Uh, <laughs> patients with dementia or patients with uh, uh, spinal cord injuries. I mean, that's insane. You're not going to get through it. I mean, by giving it through the brain, of course, of course. That's it's not, a miracle. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, because uh, we've treated hundreds of patients with uh, spinal cord injuries, okay? So getting back to your question is we have, first of all, as you said, we are not here to harm any person. We have to be honest and ethically committed to tell the truth. If the patient is facing a, let's say, let me give you an example, a coxarthrosis, I mean, stage four, which is like bone to bone, yep. we can try once with the, 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 maybe we can use a scaffold or we can use a, a, the strongest uh, MSCs we can have. Yeah. But if it doesn't work out on the first one, that's it. Yeah, you better work. send patient to uh, you better send the patient to the orthopedic surgeon for, for right. I mean to to get the surgery performed. The laminectomy, exactly. Yep. So yep. Uh, on the back is different, you know, herniated discs, or as you as you mentioned, uh, according to the patient's age, we can offer different treatments. Uh, that's when I uh, when I mentioned about the the clinical team you're you're surrounded by. I only work with pain management and specialists, and we do. Um, we offer the palliative care protocols by only not by only giving the the stem cells there, but also to control 
or to offer the control the, uh, or to get rid of the pain because that's yeah. super important. We can just right. raise the frequency. We can use different kind of techniques. Uh, at the point that we uh, combine the, these two, I mean, regenerative medicine with pain management medicine, and we offer ambulatory, percutaneous, uh, and personalized protocols because it's not the same. I mean, the dose that you may need is different from the dose that I may need or patient right. uh, pay from a patient of 70 years old. Okay, right. Right. so if we combine these two techniques, we improve people's condition and also we repair the affected tissues. Yeah. So if from one application, if the for the, the the simple application we give, we see a benefit in midterm, let's say six months, nine months, a year, fine. If not, I always recommend patients. I mean, we can always try again, but if on the second one you don't experience any benefit, that's it. You better go and get repaired. I mean, that, those burn right. rates with other techniques, definitely. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. So, so around that and in staying there, because I love, obviously, you know, I have a very large group of uh, biohackers in my audience, right? Males and females. Um, but I also have a lot of people too, that are just aging and they want to age better, look better, feel better, you know? Um, but for, you know, the person who's, like you said, let's call them somewhat healthy, cellularly healthy. Mm -hmm. At what point do you look at this as something that you should do regularly? And before you answer, you know, obviously I told you about my experience. You know, my wife and I both have had the P and the O shot. We've had the, you know, million uh, s cells, you know, IV. I also had a shot in my right leg from after my car accident, which, you know, I had some nerve damage, which I assumed I had nerve damage. I mean, nothing in a years of treatment and recovery and uh, rehabilitation could help. But the shot literally to me was like magic. As I told you, like two weeks later, mm -hmm. I had full range of motion inside my adductor, inside my inguinal canal, that entire area. Uh, and then also the P and the O shot for, my, I mean, the O shot was like the greatest thing ever for my wife. Mm -hmm. Now we both had, we both had these shots in uh, July of last year, right? So it's been close to eight months. Mm -hmm. So my questions for you are, it's twofold. The first, at what age if you're really into, you know, optimizing your health, optimizing your physiology, optimizing your bio, bio, biocellular system, do you consider doing this? And then on the O shot and the P shot, because again, I've already, you know, said these are the most amazing things that I've experienced or potentially I've experienced. Uh, how often do you redo it as you age? Um, every year. I mean, if you start, let's say, uh, at your early 30s, that's fine. But I mean, after 36, when we drop the, pr the production of growth hormone, I mean, uh, that it's clearly evident and blood tests. I mean, you can check that. For sure. So that's yeah. when the, 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 let's say the age, uh, the really natural age we have can be appearing in our, let's say, in our skin, yeah. joints, and multiple other tissues. Okay. If you don't prevent by 36, obviously you're going to speed out that oxidation process and the inflammation can trigger the genes and everything we have discussed before. But I recommend, I personally recommend from uh, starting at 36 and then from, from that moment could be uh, a year application. I mean, could be every, no longer than eight, every 18 months. Okay. We'll, uh, you have to remember they, the cells get into the cellular cycle and they don't last like forever. Yeah, that's of nothing that, yeah, that's not, you can you can take some supplements, you can follow a diet, you can follow a lifestyle or organic lifestyle, whatever you can call it, that will help a lot. Yeah. But to bring a, 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 a you know, to refresh your your cellular uh, activity, you better bring that those fresh cells that will give you that boost to repair the damaged tissues inside your body. So, I mean, it sounds like, and obviously you and I haven't talked about this, and I don't know if you've ever done this, you know, in your past, it sounds like as this expands, like, cause like you were saying, you know, you start talking about beyond this is gene editing CRISPR, you know, you start getting even deeper into like the weeds of 
what is coming um, to really optimize and enhance longevity, right? Because I think that's kind of the magic, the fountain of youth, the Ponce de Leon aspect of it. Um, dude, Joel, I, I, I think about like creating like some sort of a member. I mean, I mean, really, I mean, I don't know how you do this in a, in a clinical setting, but like a membership program where, you know, people who understand the value of this and you know, they truly want to get this done once a year, you know, come fly to, okay. So they're in New York, they're in Texas, you know, they're in Southern California, they're wherever. And they're like, they listen to me and they're like, you know, I really trust Jay. I really trust his doctors that he brings on. Like, how can I get, how can I take advantage of something like that? Where it's like, I come and see Dr. Joel once a year. I mean, I mean, I, I know you don't have an answer to that, but I just like, I'm thinking big picture right now. And it seems like this would be something to create for people because, who doesn't uh, want to yeah. do this? You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, yes. Actually, um, the entire project that I'm developing, that I, or that I have been developing since a few years ago, targets to become not only a, a, a plan or a program that can be given or offered by a membership, you know, to get a discount awesome. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure we can, in the near future, that's what I'm after you know um, that's my 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 goal to even create the first medical insurance for regenerative uh medicine oh that would be because, amazing bro. yeah we have faced uh and we have um experienced a lot through some patients specifically to those known as no option patients no option yeah that's why we have treated or i have treated and i have uh published multiple uh, medical scientific articles regarding spinal cord injuries. I mean, it's not, it's never easy. It's not cheap. Yeah. And yeah. obviously the expectations of getting that kind of treatment is super high. There yeah. are two ways, in my opinion, and that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm working hard on it. Two ways to, to offer these to patients or to the general public. I mean, for the healthy ones and sure. inclu including those no option ones. One, to start with the first uh, regenerative medicine, medical insurance, I mean, for real, instead of a membership. That's I know amazing. the membership sounds better, but I mean, in reality, it's still, it, sometimes it's still expensive for, for patients. And you got to deal with the bureaucracy of the medical establishment, right? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's why we created, I mean, uh, so for your audience to know, we created a, a special legal shelter in Mexico. We're not working underground. I mean, we're not working, avoiding the law or doing some corruption. No, no, no. We're working with the law, giving the right to patients, even foreign patients who come to see me in my practice. Um, they're covered by uh, the, the legal shelter claiming the right by obtaining these kind of treatments okay yeah it's awesome so um if we are focused i mean not only me but some other practitioners can be focused on developing this medical insurance that i'm telling you it's only by uh getting a, a, a an ipo with the company that right. will make the money not only in that um not only by giving treatments okay or doing research and development but also given this opportunity to patients then the other, uh, as I mentioned, there are two options, so there or two ways to do it. The second one will be through the foundation. I created right. a foundation that uh, I am not sure if this year will be ready or the year after, but we can collect money from patients or through other things that I have designed in my mind. Right. We can obtain money to be given to those no option patients because literally, if you check the history of medical uh, or regenerative medicine, you're going to see that patients who needed like a special kind of treatments were those that were the experimental patients at the beginning. You know, leukemia or some other patients who suffered diseases that were not, you know, literally uh, with, that they were like with no other kind of treatment offered or getting any kind of other opportunity for them. Those were uh, the patients who accepted, you know, the treatments. At the end of the day, it sounds weird, but they had nothing to lose. But when they prove the, the cells given to them brought, you know, a live tissue revival or whatever you want to call it, that was, I mean, when they, everything started. But we can't claim at this stage that we can cure. And some doctors or medical practitioners still claim <laughs> they cure. And that's a problem, you know, unethical work just to obtain some money. And 
uh, sadly is still happening like that. So that's why um, this process that I'm going through is taking a little bit, but uh, that's those are my goals. That's what I'm targeting to do. And that's going to happen sooner or later. Because that's awesome. People, we, we, we're not fighting against the FDA or Mexican coffee priests or whatever you call it, the regulators or, around the world. We're, we're just proving that our methods are safe and can be achievable for most of the patients because they have the right and freedom to choose what they want to get into their body. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's, we have to bring it all together. It's not only by saying, oh, Dr. Osorio is the best because, no. It's about multiple factors that will be integrated at the same time for us to be freely offering these kind of treatments. At That's awesome. Stage, you. Yeah. At this stage, yeah, membership sounds great. And, you know, I'm willing to give a, a discount to your audience if they come through your podcast. And that's for sure. No problem. Well, I mean, first off, that's very altruistic of you. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, I, I you know, we didn't, you didn't say it, but I mean, I, I was thinking it, but I mean, there's also grants out there that, you know, there's always these like, you know, hundreds of thousands of grants that lay in silence or lay in the weeds that no one can ever find that are out there that, you know, they offer money for this kind of stuff. I mean, like you said, these no option people that are basically turned to the, to the curb, the kick to the curb. And, you know, they're, it's kind of last option. And I mean, I'm sure there's so much money out there. So it's an amazing idea, but I mean, I love the idea of just a met, you know, again, an, what I would call a health optimization insurance plan. I mean, literally, that's what it would be. I mean, you would be seeking to enhance or extend your life and you would be using these various procedures, you know, and obviously, like you said, I mean, you know, you're a clinical research editor, so you can fund studies, you can do, uh, you know, peer review groups, you can take, you know, 50 patients and 25 of them can be getting a placebo and 25 of them can be getting the real thing. And then you can actually, you know, demonstrate real stuff. I mean, it's all very exciting. It really sounds exciting. Yeah, we're currently um, doing a research, uh, not that you mentioned about uh, placebo patients. We're currently given uh, to 50 patients, we're given uh, a chance to get uh, uh, regenerative medical treatment based on their erectile dysfunction. We're talking yeah. about chronic diabetic patients. We're talking about patients who suffered uh, renal failure and they had a kidney transplant or they are experiencing uh, renal failure, those are the hardest to, uh, I mean, to, to get back on, on that uh, erection, uh, you know, natural erection needs. So uh, we're working on it. It's, it's been developed by a, a neurologist friend of mine. He's going to become one of the first andrologists, certified andrologists in Mexico. That's awesome. His, uh, his, ma his master's was on, on, andrology in spain so that this is his uh final project so awesome. i mean when you take things serious i mean like in a really good way it's never easy but i can claim once again normally we are all attached somehow to marketing i'm not complaining about anyone but it's not only about seeing the superhero doctor that is going to cure you I mean, because that happens. People follow that marketing. I'm not against it. It's just that I'm mm -hmm. saying we have to be realistic. And then mm -hmm. what I'm telling you about that is that there's no hero here. The heroes are the cells and the biotechnologists, uh, biotechnologists isolating the cells. Mm -hmm. We control the protocols given to patients and we create those pathways for the patients to obtain the best outcome. Okay. But I mean, the, the, the heroes here are the cells. Yeah. That baby, I mean, that mom who decided to donate the, the placenta and umbilical cord, that's where we isolate the real heroes here. Of right. course, we are part of this process to obtain that longevity or that increased lifespan for, I mean, that we're targeting for patients or yep. to relieve some patients' uh, pathologies, diseases, condition. But in, in the reality is that the heroes are the cells. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, Joel, this podcast has been amazing. I'm grateful that you came on here today. Let me throw up uh, your website and let me just say, you know, to you guys, uh, you'll be hearing a lot more from Dr. Joel and of course myself, uh, because as I've now moved down here and I'm starting to establish my Mexican residency, uh, he and I are going to be doing a lot of stuff together, probably more podcasts, probably more conversations. And then of course, we will also be talking about uh, an opportunity for all of you guys around the world 
um, you know, in this audience uh, who are interested in seeking the highest level stem cell treatment and regenerative, you know, let's call it regenerative medicine treatment in the world, uh, you'll have an opportunity to fly into Cancun and see him for a day or two and then, you know, have a vacation, right? I mean, what, what could be better? I mean, honestly, I've, Joel doesn't know this because he doesn't know me well enough, but I am a world traveler and I've been everywhere. And I truly do not know a better place to vacation than here. Uh, it is just, I mean, it's just, honestly, it's just the weather, the people, the culture, uh, there's no crime. I mean, I know people read shit on CNN and, you know, now, like now what they're hearing is that Uber in Cancun. I mean, it's all such nonsense, bro. <laughs> My dad sent me a message like three days ago. He's like, Hey, you know, I was, was on Twitter and I saw a, it was trending in Cancun about Uber. And I'm like, dude, it's nothing. They just, they're looking for stories, but I mean, it, it really is an amazing place. I and mean, my wife and I are literally have been coming to the Riviera Maya for almost 10 years now. And now we've obviously permanently lo relocated here. And honestly, dude, I've met so many amazing people in just the three and a half months that we've been living here. that are all like us, you know, they've left Canada, they've left the States, they've left Western Europe. They've left their native countries to come here because it's just such an amazing place. So if you're somebody who follows me and you haven't been to Mexico and you haven't been down to this area, consider coming down here, considering going to his uh, website, which is regenerage.clinic. Uh, tell him I sent you and uh, you'll hear again a lot more information about he and I and the stuff that we're planning on doing. But doc, I really appreciate you coming on here today. Thank you. Awesome, man. So you guys and gals who watch this amazing podcast, support the amazing people that come on, go to his website, which is regenerage.clinic. And of course, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. Mm -hmm.